Hello guys, how are you? I am back after over a month. <laughs> I don't even know how long it's been and I'm so out of practice. And I will tell you, the light is not my friend today. I have had to restart this video like four times. I also have clearly lost my mind because I'm also trying to record while Park and Tim are both home right now. Tim is out front doing yard stuff. Park is up in his room. Either one of them could bust through here or down here at any moment. I've told them to please be quiet, but I don't know that they're gonna necessarily listen to that. <laughs> I have a feeling this video is going to be a mess just like my life. So, but I have tried to record it so many times that I just need to get it done. I actually tried to record on Thursday and had forgotten that it was early out. Tim was out of town, Park was in school, and I was like, okay, I'm going to um, get on and record real quick. And then of course, Parker started texting me and calling me and I'm like, oh my gosh, what is going on? So I uh, then realized that he had early out that day because they had testing. And the iPhone, why can they not fix this? I don't understand this. This should not be that difficult because I know the Android phones can do it. You cannot pause a video on the iPhone and then come back to it. You have to stop it. And then I would have to restart it. And then I would have to splice it. And Tara did tell me like a app I could use to do that, but that sounded like way more work than what I wanted to deal with. And then I would have like a clothing change from like the first half of the video to the second half of the video. Cause I got park and I had to get them food and came home. And then of course I got busy and I didn't sit down to film the second half of the video. And so here I am. It is now Sunday, April 14th. I believe I'm still having lighting issues downstairs. I had to stop filming upstairs and now I'm still having lighting issues downstairs. Today's just not my day. It's really not my day, but I just want to get this video uploaded. So it is what it is. I apologize. And hopefully you guys will just give me some grace. And it looks like that I have like lightning beams like coming down onto my head at the moment. <laughs> oh my gosh, I give up. Um, oh, so what have I been up to? Well, uh, I filmed before I went to Utah. I knew I was not going to film before I left for Utah. I just didn't realize it was going to be this long until I filmed again. So I was able to fly home for mm, 11 or 12 days. I can't remember what it was to Utah. And uh, it was so good. It was so good. I usually get back there just like one time a year. Um, I did this last year over spring break, park spring break, and it worked really well. And so I, you know, we stuck with that this year, except um, we actually are going back a second time this year. So I'm super excited. We're going back this summer, but Tim, Park, and Grace are coming with me. Uh, Tim Park and Grace have not been back to Utah in like a couple years. My parents always fly out here to see us and my sisters come out with my nieces and nephew. And so they haven't been back to Utah in a while. So it's gonna be really good. And as much as I try to juggle things and people and when I'm back in Utah, I never get to see everybody that I want to see. I never get to spend time with people that I want to spend time with. Um, not only does my family live there, but we also live there for many years. And so we have a lot of um, very dear friends. My two best friends live there. And so um, it's always very, very busy when I'm back with trying to split my time between family and friends and all the stuff I still want to do while I'm back there. So, uh, I did get to spend some um, time with Laura and Candace, my best friends. Uh, Candace actually picked me up from the airport. We drove up to Ogden and she was brilliant and is the best and thought it would be fun if we stayed at the Marriott across the street from uh, Shepherd's Bush. <laughs> like elated if you guys follow me on instagram then you see the pictures like literally we were all the way on the top floor and we had a beautiful view of ogden and the mountains and right out my window literally like across the parking lot with shepherd's bush so it was great it was so good candace had 
work stuff she had to do the couple days I was with her. I flew in on a Thursday morning because um, my flight left super early here on the East Coast and got in early there. So uh, we had like all day Thursday, all day Friday, half day Saturday. And I knew she had some work stuff she had to do, but the beauty of being friends with someone that long, um, actually Laura and Candace, I ironically, actually not so ironically, I, I literally met them like a couple days apart. Uh, we used to all go to the same church together. So when we lived in Utah, when I lived in Utah, they still live in Utah. <laughs> But the beauty of being friends with someone for that long is we don't have to entertain each other. She was like, hey, I got to go hop on this work call or I got to do this, you know, Zoom thingy. And I'm like, hey, no problem. So I either would stitch or I just walked across the street to Shepherd's Bush, which I did many times. Uh, Tina and Terry are just wonderful. I adore them. We started a basket on my first day and it just grew over the couple days that I was there. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. I got to meet up with Lori, Thread Milk Design, and um, my friend Sandy, Sandy Spencer. She's Whispered Stitches on Instagram. So uh, they both live up north, right around, not far from Shepherd's Bush. So when I knew I was going to be up there, we had made plans. I actually saw, I actually ran into Lori unplanned at Shepherd's Bush on Thursday, and we spent a little time together. And then we met up on Saturday and had lunch together. So I don't know how to insert videos or pictures, but I'll try and put a picture in. We did take one picture. I know you guys, y'all know that I'm like horrible with pictures. So, but we did take one picture. I'm glad. And then, um, I went down to Salt Lake and spent the week with my family, which is always just, it's just so good to be home. And I got to be there for Easter. I don't usually get to spend holidays with them out my family out west and so i was really excited about that and got to see some of my cousins and it was just it was so good um i miss my sister like crazy i miss my nieces and nephew and obviously my parents and i just i swear i took walks like all the time and i just breathed in the mountain air oh and when i first got off the plane when i arrived on thursday i, I do remember i walked outside I don't know if this is a bad word. Maybe I'm not supposed to say this, but I looked up. There was like just snow on like the top of the mountain and it was like 60 degrees. And I was like, what the crap is this? I'm like, I did not come all the way to Utah for it to be warmer than it is in Ohio. Oh, I was not a happy camper. I was pretty annoyed, but because Utah loved me, it embraced me in a warm, snowy hug, and uh, it snowed a couple times while I was there. I was probably the only person in Salt Lake that was happy about there being more snow, but I was thrilled. So by the time I left, um, the mountains were covered in snow, as they should be this time of year, and so I was a super happy camper, super happy camper. So... It was, um, I got to spend time with Laura too, obviously, and um, got to go to a Good Friday service with her and her boys, both of her boys. Her oldest, Blake, plays guitar. Her youngest, Brad, is an incredible, incredible pianist and vocalist. Oh, his voice. I love listening to Brad sing so much. So I got to have a wonderful um, two days with them as well. And it was just a really good trip. Um, it's always good to be around people who know you and love you well. Um, kind of helps to refill a little bit of the cup that gets drained sometimes. So it was just a wonderful trip. I cannot wait to go back this summer. Uh, at least won't be as humid he is as here, so I will welcome that. But uh, my hope is to meet up with um, and see quite a few people that I was not able to see on this trip. Um, there was kind of a list from cross-stitch people to old friends of ours that we've had for years. Um, and so my hope is to try and figure out how to uh, work all of that so that I can hopefully see everybody that I want to see that I was not able to see this time. So 
All right, enough of the recap. Anything else has happened since I've been home? Not really. I've been running crazy since I've been home. Tim's been out of town a bunch, and so just juggling stuff and took me quite a few days to get reacclimated back to East Coast time. I don't know why, but for some reason this trip was harder with that. And I don't know, age maybe. I'm not sure, but it did. <clears throat> so yeah, I'm back um, and I leave again <laughs> in like a week and a half. I think it's in a week and a half. Um, we have a or we're doing like a little friend girls weekend. Yeah, it's in a week and a half. Um, actually a little over a week, whatever, it doesn't matter. It's coming up, not this week, but next week. <laughs> I don't know why I'm getting caught up in the details. You can tell I'm super out of practice. So we're having a girls weekend. I'm really excited about it. Um, yeah, it's going to be really good. So I hope, I pro I will not do a Friday night live that night. Um, so not this coming Friday, but the Friday after. But I, we're hoping to film like a little fun video that I probably will upload in its place instead of a live. So I would not do, <laughs> I would not do a live. I will do a video and I will upload it because there's no telling what would happen on that live. That may be a... That would be probably a bit much for all you guys. Uh, you'd probably never follow me again. But um, I, I'm going to do something and I will upload it. I promise. So I'm excited about that. And I can share more about that on my next video when I get back. So that's it. All right. Let's move on to the stitching. Gosh, I did good. What is that? 12 minutes or so? There's a lot more I could say. But, I, you know, it, you, you guys aren't here for that. You're here for the stitching. Not that I've had a ton of stitching. I guess I should make that disclaimer too. So I did not do as much stitching as I wanted to in Utah, sadly. It's usually the case when you go on vacation. I have lofty goals for myself when I go on vacation and think that I'm gonna have like all this time and I'm gonna do all this stitching and does it ever usually happen? No, no it does not. So I have not had as much stitching done because two of the four weeks I've been gone, I was in Utah, so. But I have made a little progress on some stuff. So, you know, it, I'm not like totally slacking and you're like, why are you even doing a video if you don't even have stuff to show? <laughs> I do have haul and um, at least I have Shepherd's Bush haul. Let me, actually, let me make that disclaimer. I have Shepherd's Bush haul because when I sat and was thinking, what have I even bought? Like since I filmed last, which was like over a month ago, guys, I'm so bad. I don't even remember. I have no clue what I've bought. None. I mean, I guess I should have like a basket that I put stuff in, but I haven't done that. And I don't remember what I've bought. So if I randomly find things that I'm like, oh, I don't think I've shown that, then I'll show it in um, future videos. But as of now, I literally can't remember what I've bought or have not bought in the last month. So I'm like the worst floss tuber ever. Sorry, you guys. You guys don't come here for my organizational skills. This I do know. So, um, yeah, I was trying to think. Was there anything else that I have not talked about? No, probably not. I did have some funny stories from Utah, but I don't want to drone on for a half an hour telling y'all my um, shameful moments. <laughs> embarrassing moments from Utah. Maybe one time we'll do that. Or maybe on one of my lives I'll do that. Um, I don't I don't want to sit here and story tell for a half an hour. That's not why you guys are here. Um, this is a this is a stitching channel. <laughs> so we'll just get to my whips. If a story hits me or the spirit inspires me, I'll share it. But until then, let's get to the whips because that's what you guys are here for, right? Yes. Okie dokie. Um I I, put, I brought my stitching stuff on the plane because I thought I was going to stitch on the plane. Um, that didn't happen. You know, I was, my mom actually flew out on the same flight with me to Utah because she was going to spend a couple days with my sister 
because when I first flew in, like I said, Candace picked me up. I went up north. Candace and Laura lived north of Salt Lake and um, up towards Shepherd's Bush. And my family all lived south of Salt Lake. So we actually went opposite directions. I got to see my sister for a minute. She picked up my mom. They went down to my sister's house and I went up north with Candace. So I actually didn't see my mom other than our flight out. We had the same flight out. And um, we were we were in the back in steerage and um they don't allot you a whole lot of space to do pretty much anything on <laughs> on your flight other than stay packed in like a sardine i had the window seat i did tell mom i wanted the window seat we were in the there was a middle seat up until like the day of our flight the middle seat was open and we thought oh okay good so mom had picked the aisle i picked the window i'm a window girl and at least I have something to like lean into to get myself some space if I need it. And so, but then of course the day of the flight was completely booked full. Apparently because Dayton, unbeknownst to me, was in the, whatever they call it, March Madness thing. They were playing in Utah. And so the whole flight was like packed full and there was tons of people who were rooting for whatever Dayton school was in there. Y'all don't hate me on this. I am not up on my basketball stuff. So, but they were all flying out to Utah to see Dayton play in the March Madness tournament or NCAA tournament. Is that what it is? I don't know. Um, so yeah, this poor guy, at least he was like a small guy. <laughs> He was like a college guy. He got stuck in between me and my mom. He probably was hating life that flight because mom kept leaning over and talking to me like over him or she was having problems with her phone and her earbuds and she kept handing them to me. And I'm sure this guy's like, oh my gosh. I mean, he was laughing. He helped me out a few times with some technical things. Um, it was kind of funny, but there was no room for me to pull out my stitching in steerage. So... I ended up just knitting. I just knitted because that was easy, portable, and I did not need all, you know, my accessories to knit. I pulled out my knitting bag and that was it. That's all I needed. So I knitted on the way out there. Thankfully, on the way back, I had gotten upgraded and um, flew in a more civilized fashion where I had lots of more space <laughs> to stitch and do things. So on the way out, it did not happen. But I was able to get in a, a few more. Oh, that's not, oops, sorry. The sun is like really coming in now. Jeez, guys, I'm sorry. Let me see. I don't want, no, it's gonna show the pattern. As is that, let me put this, let me put the linen behind it. Okay, so I was able to get, there we go. That'll help, there we go. So I was able to get in a few more. I finished this alphabet. I, I got more done on the alphabet and I finished the top and this bottom border on my LW sampler from Leela Studios. Um, it's actually Lily White is the name of the antique that this is based off of, but LW is my initials. So that's why I decided to stitch it. And I am not doing it in red, which... It's no surprise to you guys. I'm not a big red sampler girl. Um, I decided on a green silk. Do I remember what that green silk is? No, I do not. It's a Gloriana. Olive something. So this is... Oh, man. This... I'm so sorry, you guys. The lighting is just 1,000% not going to be my friend today. Okay, here we are. So it's small. This is, I mean, this is the end, the, the end of it, I should say, right here. So it's a small sampler. This is on 40 count um, Hemingway by Needle and Flax. I love how this is looking with that green silk. It's gorgeous. It's going to be so pretty. It's not going to be, it's not a big sampler at all. It's maybe going to go down to about here, so small really small but it's beautiful I love it and I love it on this Hemingway oh subsequently I didn't even bring the chart oh geez Liz so this was my retreat piece from Hobby House last year and I did put in a few more things I did the spools the over one spools 
the scissors and sampler. So I did put in some more there. Actually, I just have like one more thing here, put in R and then finish this border and I'm done. Why is this not done? I don't know, it's ridiculous. It's just a little pillow. It was from the Hobby House Retreat last year. It was our small from Tanya, the Scarlet House. So, and then I did my own 103 conversion on this. So I did put in some more on that. I didn't bring the chart in here though. I forgot actually I had even worked on that. I just saw that. <laughs> oh my gosh, way to go, Liz. Oh, why the light, why? Okay, next one I worked a little bit more on was my Ladies Quaker. I put in the border of this, started the flower pot, finished this. Really all I have left to do, I'm switching out this with another motif from the Gentleman Quaker I'm doing. So I just need to put in that motif, finish this little flower. Oh, I did these things too on the sides. And then fill in this and I'm done. Gosh, I have a lot of stuff I'm almost done on. I just need to plow through and just finish them already. All right, so this is on, do I remember what linen this is? No, I do not. I know I've said it in other videos. Darn it. Why do I not remember what this is? Oh, put this one in behind it. Maybe that'll help. Oh yeah, that helps. Okay. There we go. Almost done. She's a lot of fun. I did start on the gentleman just because I wanted to see what the green looked like. And I love it. This is my own silk conversion. Um, this is, I think, called, this is a silk gatherer, the dark color, I believe, and it's called Chimney Sweep. The pink on this one is a Belle Soir Sister Scarlet. Now, the Chimney Sweep, I'm doing the same on both of them. I'm doing one for me and one for Tim. Um, and Tim's is done in a green instead of a blue, even though I love blue. Blue's my favorite color, but I decided on the green. And it's a... You know what, I really don't remember. It's either a Belle Swallows or Gloriana, the green I'm using. I think it's like Granny Smith or something like that. It's really pretty. So not much more to go on her. I just need to, I need to buckle down and get her done, but I keep getting distracted by other things. So isn't that the story of my life? Probably a lot of people's lives. So, all right. Uh-oh, do I not have the cover for this one? Oh no. You gotta be kidding me. I probably dropped it going up and down the stairs a million times, like I did. Oh, I did. Ah! Because I started upstairs and then had to come downstairs. So, oh well, you guys hopefully you'll know. This is um, With Thy Needle, Brenda Gervais, The House of Blues and Browns is what it's called. It's those long pillows with like the ticking on the end. And I actually have some of the blue antique ticking. I'd got it from an antique store here. One of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite booths in the store. They always have good like fibers and fabrics and laces and stuff like that. So I picked it up there. I'm either gonna make a pillow out of it or I'm gonna frame it. I'm not, I haven't decided yet because some people frame these. Like she has her Christmas one. She has this one, she has a Halloween one. Um, so, oh, I did get more done on this. So I finished this row and did the alphabet row on here. So really I just have, um, there's not much more. There's another row of alphabets, half an alphabet and a couple little motifs and that's it. And then it's done. This is on 46 count Seraphim Winter Woolens. Oh, I love this one so much. It's so pretty. I did stick with blues and kind of goldy browns on this. So, but I did do my own conversion color for it. So, yeah, I really love this one. Again, so close to being done. So close yet so far. So, I got a little bit more done on this one. What is this color for those? You know what? I almost think that that's a... I must think that Quaker's on a lakeside. Mm. I know I've said it before. I'll have to go back and look and see. I know I've said it before on 
the light. You guys, I'm so sorry. I'm like trying to hide from it. Ugh, ugh. Ugh. I give up. Okay, next whip. I've just got two more whips and then I have one. Oh no, you gotta be kidding me. I didn't bring my finish downstairs. Let me have to run upstairs and grab that real quick to show you guys. So, if only I had background music for you. Darn it, I can't believe I left that upstairs. Okay, next whip is actually a new start in a sal that I am hosting with my friend Jessica Sweetwater Stitcher. Uh, I, th I think I had mentioned that this was one of my favorite market releases and she had loved it too. And so we had messaged back and forth and she asked if I wanted to do a sal with her. I said, absolutely, I'd love to. She just finished Channing Street, which was her Annie B's from last year from market last year. And then we started this one on April 1st. It's actually the day I was flying home from Utah, but I was able to get a little start. And then since I've been home, I've gotten quite a bit done because I actually love this stitch, you guys, there. I love this stitch, like, so much. I've just, I've just keep, <laughs> I just keep gravitating towards it and pulling it out. I did not think I was going to do as well as I've done because I'm horrible at sales. I'm like the worst seller. I'm a start a longer, not a stitch a longer. But um, I love this one so much and it's been so fun to stitch. So I love you, Annie and girls. I do. Um, Chelsea and Belle, I love you guys, but I did change the colors. Broken record. Y'all know that already. So a few that I know I changed though. I, this hot pink and this like raspberry color, I switched those out because I do not have those colors in my home at all. So I switched those to blue as you guys will soon see. And actually this is blue and this is like a mustardy yellow, the same color I'm doing the house. So I thought this house was yellow and from the front of this, it kind of looks that way, but it's not. It's like a tannish color, kind of like a, it's like a hazelnutty brown. And, but I like the idea of the yellow house. So I made my house yellow. Actually, it's like a mustard color. And instead of the black, because there's, this is, if I hold this still, maybe it'll focus. Uh, no, it's not really focusing that well, is it, you guys? So this is black, the roof is black, and there's a black line down here. I didn't want the stark contrast of black because I made these very kind of like dusty, not pastel, but very kind of prim, dusty kind of colors. I don't even know if that's a thing, but I just made that word up or that description up. But because of those, I didn't want the stark contrast to the black. So I actually did brown, but the brown actually looks really good with the like mustard yellow house. So um, I don't know that I'm gonna do this yet. I haven't decided, but I do know down here, I'm not doing the black line. I'm just gonna continue the color that I chose for the side border to go along the bottom. So, I mean, just a few things. I'm not changing the design, but I am changing some of my colors. Okay, so on to the actual stitch piece now that I've made all of those disclaimers. So here is what I've got so far. Oh, you guys, I love it so much. Let me see if I can. That sunlight is just going to be my nemesis today. Oh, I got a break in the clouds. Okay, here we go. So here's what I've got so far. So this is hickory sticks. So it's a brown. And then this, I know the color of the house, I chose um, Bee's Knees by Weeks. Cause it's kind of like a darker mustardy yellow color. And then there's where I did the blue. I did do the mustard up there. So I've changed some of this. I know this border is Little House Brown by Classic Color Works. So. Sorry, I had all of these ironed, but I actually was stitching on this last night. I had them ironed on Thursday when I first started recording, but I've since stitched on them and I did not iron them again. It was a miracle I ironed them in the first place, but so sorry, I have not ironed this again, but um, this is on, whew, that needle's sticking out there. This is on Seraphim, no, I lie, I lie. Misspoke, 
I misspoke. I wasn't intentionally lying. I misspoke. Um, this is on um, 40 Count Newport Beach by Needle and Flax. Um, a remnant piece that I had. So, because I had stitched um, Lori's thread milks like Christmas tree last year. So, anyways. <clears throat> I don't know if that, there we go. Sort of, whatever. I give up, you guys. I give up. There we go. Okay, so that's what I've got so far. I love it. It's coming along. I'm excited. I, I actually will probably get this done here relatively soon because I just enjoy stitching on it so much. So there you go. That's my conversion so far and what I've got. Okie doke. Last whip is my anniversary piece that started last year had the ill-fated piece of linen that I spilled something on. Rachel said, yeah, you're, that's, that's, you're not going to be able to fix that. So got a new piece. Uh, my favorite needle and flax linen, 46 count Hawthorne. Uh, it's my most favorite, but I think everything looks beautiful on it. <clears throat> so I restarted it this year and do you need to come in? My husband. Okay, so restarted it this year. Same piece, got another piece of Hawthorne. And this is what I've got so far, you guys. Oh, I love it so much. I am so close to this one too. This is, this is the video of so close yet so far for so many finishes <laughs> but I am so I just have to do this row this row and then finish this border and I'm done it, it, there's really not much left to it at all it's just long and skinny so I will say I don't know that you can see these because my camera is not focusing all that well but these little guys is it no yes these little guys are Algerian eyelets It's a little more challenging to do an Algerian eyelet on 46 count, as I learned. Um, they look, I don't know, I think they look okay. They're not easy. You're obviously not gonna have the defined middle as much as you'd will on a larger linen, but I think it worked. I think it's okay. So that's what I've got so far on my anniversary sampler. I love it. I'll probably come to right about here. It's gonna kind of be a long re rectangular. I'm going to have it framed, but it's beautiful. It's been such a fun stitch. This one and my many matches are the ones that I really have just been gravitating to because I am just loving them and I also want to get them done. So, all right, that's it for my whips. Yes, it is. Oh, my finish. Okay. Okay, I may run upstairs real quick and grab it. I'm so sorry. I've done this one other time and I apologize for this, but I really want you guys to see it. Okay, I'll be right back. If I had like background music I can play, I totally would, but talk to amongst yourself. Sing a little if you want. That's what I would do. Okay, one second, guys. Let me grab my finish. Ah. Hold on. Okay, I'll be right All right, I'm back. <laughs> I knew right where it was. Probably should not be running when I'm recording. Then I'm going to be like wheezing on this video. Y'all see how out of shape I am running up and down the stairs. Okay, so I did finish this and I may have actually finished other things, but this is the only one I could actually remember finishing. So uh, it is... Oh my gosh, I left the chart upstairs. <laughs> uh, Y'all, I'm not running those stairs again. It is a well-established fact that exercise and I are not friends. My body was not made for it. Um, whew, I'm not going up those stairs again. <laughs> so you guys are just going to have to imagine it. This was Tanya's release like around market time. 
Tanya wasn't at market, but she released a couple charts. This is one of them. It was called the Alphabet Sampler. It was the one that came on the, or she finished on the, that really beautiful black board from April Homestead Needleworks. You know, with the little like circle things. It had the three little arches on the top. I think you guys know what I'm talking about. It's called the Alphabet Sampler. So this is on 46 count milk and honey by Fiber on a Whim. I did my own conversion and that's how it turned out. Oh, it's so good. So instead of stark black, I did carriage black on this because it has a little gray in it and just softens it up a little bit. And then, you know, I changed out my reds and my blues and all that kind of fun stuff. So this is my finish. I love stitching this one. This one was a lot of fun. It's small. Now, I was going to get the board from April, and I love the board from April. Please do not get me wrong. I love the board from April. But I decided, I think I want to finish it on... Um, uh, old, like small, you know, like maybe this size. It was like a little tablet size chalkboard, a uh, like vintage chalkboard. Um, I think it would look so cute on that. So I just, I used to see them everywhere. And now that I need one, can I find one? Nope. So I've been looking, I will find one. And I want to finish it on the chalkboard, just like you would on one of the wooden boards. And then I'm going to attach like some twill tape or um, lace of some kind. No, probably not lace because that seems too fancy. I'll probably do some twill tape of some kind. Vintage or like the mattress binding stuff, whatever that is, that ribbon um onto the back so i can hang it on a wall so that's my plan with it as soon as i can find the chalkboard i'm going to finish it on that so i'm excited i haven't really been able to get to too many antique malls here so i need to hit up my the couple here that i go to and then of course my ones in madison where my mom lives <sighs> love those ones so speaking of antiques i will show you before i left Oh yeah, before I left, I went to see my mom on her birthday, that's what it was. I went to see my mom before I left for Utah and I did go to my favorite antique store there. And I just, I got a bunch of stuff but I'm not gonna show you guys all of that but I will show you a couple things I got that I really love. So I found, look at this you guys, so it's a flower frog. But I have never seen one in the original uh, packaging before. So this is still in the original packaging. It's so cool. I have no idea how old this thing is, none. I mean, it's old, but I thought this was so much fun. Well, I mean, it was 75 cents, <laughs> but I just thought it was cool. It has like a plastic coating on it, so I can actually touch the top because it's not super sharp in here. But um, yeah, it was in its original packaging and I thought that was so cool. I didn't know how they used to come or how they packaged them. But anyways, I found that. Um, I have a special project that I am doing. And I've been collecting little salt cellars. Um, and I found this booth that had all these different color ones. And they were so much fun. So, um, or I don't know if these are salt cellars or ink wells, maybe. I don't know. What, I don't know. It was one of them. But it's the size I need. So I just love that they had the different colors. So I picked up some of those. I always pick up like little baskets when I'm there. These ones have like the hangers on the back or I can just hang it off of here. But I love my longer burger baskets. I always pick up some of those. So anyways, those were just a few of the things I got at the antique store um, before I left for Utah. Uh, all right, on to haul. I hope I'm not talking too fast, you guys. I'm really trying to escape before the sun's really blaring in my eyes. <clears throat> did I say it's Sunday the 13th? I don't know. <laughs> I did. Mm, did I? I don't know. Sunday, April. No, it's not even the 13th. It's Sunday, April 14th. Jeez Louise, Liz. Okay. Um, I am part of the Rocky Mountain Sampler Guild, and last year they had announced that Tanya was going to be doing a seminar for them.
Tanya is actually in Colorado right now in Denver. It was this weekend, so this is perfect timing. I couldn't have shown this on Thursday, but I can show it now because we've already had the Zoom meeting and everybody's already got their kits. So it was offered to the guild members to participate. Even if we don't live there, we could order the kit. They had a Zoom thing. There were some, yeah. So I wasn't on the Zoom all that long, but they had a Zoom thing. I got to hear Tanya speak and um, I was super excited. They only showed little snippets, so you didn't really know what the whole thing looked like until you got it. I'd gotten my kit this week. Um, all the ladies at the guild, I cannot speak highly enough about the Rocky Mountain Sampler Guild. Those women are on top of stuff, let me tell you. They are fantastic with communication. Um, they made the whole process very easy. So thank you, Katrina. Thank you, Kim. Thank you for all the ladies who put this together and spent so many hours making it like a success in such a beautiful piece um kit or sampler from tanya i should say tanya I, I love this one she knows i love this one so this was our piece um from this weekend hannah hartley cowgill 1835 but i just have to show you so i think now i I'm, I'm not sure on this. I want to say, I know Tanya changed a few things, so maybe this is more of like an adaptation. Mm -hmm. Or her, because I know she changed a few colors and things. But you guys, look at this border. This is like the coolest border. It looks almost like a radish. I'm in love with it. Oh, it's so awesome. And I love that she did black swans. Now I get a lot of flack because I have publicly stated that I don't particularly stitch bunnies or rabbits or I don't like big ginormous flower pots on top of houses because that would never happen in real life anyways I've gotten flack about this <laughs> but hey it is what it is I just yeah I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys and if somebody asks me I'm like mm, nope nope I don't really stitch bunnies but um anyways I'm not a big swan person either why not just throw this out there? I've already, I've already, you know, doomed myself to constant ridicule over my bunny. So I'm not a swan really stitcher either, but I told Tanya, um, cause Tanya was my Friday night friend, not this week. I had Karen and Bren this week, but the week before. So Tanya and I were talking and, um, I, I had messaged her after I got this and I was just like, I just have to tell you, I actually, I'm gonna stitch the swans. And the reason why is because they're black. And I feel like I can um, relate to a black swan. <laughs> and because she made them black, I'm actually going to stitch them. Black swan, black sheep, whatever. The odd one, the different one, the one that stands out. Um, I love it, so I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna stitch the black swans. And I love, so my favorite, my favorite little cartouches, if I was going to do a pillow, I love this bee scap here. Oh, I'm so in love with it. And I love this church scene with the almost like willow kind of like tree. It's such a beautiful sampler. So, and it's not very big. It's not a big one, um, which is also refreshing and wonderful because we know that I don't like huge samplers. But I am going to, so that was the front of the sampler. It came with, oh, you guys, 40 count lakeside vintage meadow rue. Woo -woo! One of my favorite. It's not my favorite lakeside, but it's one of my favorite lakesides. Um, so it came out with it came with the 40 count metal rue. That alone made the kit worth it. Um, Tanya included this beautiful little ruler for us. Oh, it also came with, oh, that is right over here. Un momento. This is the video where apparently I just up and walk out on you guys over and over again. Um, but I had it sitting on my coffee table right here. So it also came with this bowl. Um, because the the chart has like little pillows. So she pulled out some of these little scenes, cartouches, and made little pillows out of them. So, and they were in this dough bowl. So she sent this, she sent this beautiful little ruler and then the floss pack. The floss pack with the thread keep and all the MPIs. Now, also, I am switching out this and this. 
this is not my favorite color red. I know you guys don't roll your eyes at me and definitely not the carnation pink. I am going to still do a red and pink. I'm just going to kind of change up more to some of my favorites. I have not decided yet. I have not been in keepsakes, but I'm going to go into keepsakes this week and I'm going to switch out these two to kind of more of a Liz color palette. The rest of them, good job, Tanya. I love the blues. The blues are beautiful. So yeah, that's our floss pack, thread keep, and our little thing. So uh, I love it. I'm, I'm sure Tanya will release it, th release this at some point. So, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sampler. All right. And I'm glad I could be a part of that. Okay. Lastly, haul oh, from the Shepherd's Bosch. Um, they always, I don't have it. Actually, I took it off. I think when I was recording on Thursday, never put it back on. I love Tina and Terry always have this beautiful little ribbon that they tie their bags with. And they always tie their floss with little ribbon. You guys will see it when I pull it out. But um, I will just go over some of the haul that I got at Shepherd's Bush. And then I think I'll be done. This actually may be under an hour. Miracle. They do happen. <laughs> we'll see, though. Those are famous last words for me. So actually, just disregard what I said because it's probably not true. Um, I grabbed some more floss bags. This is not anything you guys really want to care about or see. Lori, um, Lori had taken me to Rensler. It's Rensler. Rensler Framing, which is where Shepherd's Bush does a lot of their framing. Lori does her framing. Our friend Sandy does her framing there. Um, Sandy, who met up with us, Whispered Stitches. Um, and so I had never been to Rensler's. And so Lori drove me over there because it's like a block over from Shepherd's Bush. And oh my gosh, you guys, holy cow. That frame shop is amazing. Amazing. So they also hand paint. One of the ladies that work there, and I really wish I could remember her name. One of the ladies that works there actually hand paints on a lot of their frames. And there was one that was hand painted, this beautiful frame. I have a picture of it. Again, do I know how to insert pictures? No. But it was this simple little chart, but she had done this bird in blue. So, of course, I was like, oh, I love that. Um, instead of black, she did this beautiful blue bird. And she had it in this, a frame from there that was hand painted. And I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with it. And so, um, Lori said, oh, I actually have that chart at home because I didn't know what the chart was. It's a Bent Creek red-winged blackbird except mine's going to be a bluebird so Lori was sweet and when I met up with her on Saturday she remembered and she um passed this on to me so thank you friend I am going to stitch this and I'm going to stitch it blue so I'm excited about that okie dokie um picked up some picture this plus they had 40 count heartland such a great neutral color um and I like 40 count picture this plus. If I'm going to use picture this plus, I don't use picture this plus all that often. But if I am, I do 40 because 40 stitches up like 46. So they had that. So I grabbed that. Um, I think these are Teresa's, I think. Just some of the stitch cards. If you guys, I think Teresa probably has these on her website. I think she had them at market. Teresa's room at market was so crazy. Rightfully so, because Teresa always has beautiful things. But if you guys haven't seen these, these stitch card sets, and I just know from the front of this picture, it has to be Teresa's. It didn't say it was Teresa's on the package, but I'm almost positive this is Teresa. The Nets, kitten stitchers. Um, these are the note cards. Oh, you guys. Uh, I don't know if that's Ann Gribshaw. Kind of looks like it, but I don't know for sure. Who knows what it is? That looks like it was from her red sampler book. Um, and then tomato and what is this? Mary Williams. And lastly, some beautiful, it looks like card anger almost. You guys, these are so pretty. Um, so I picked up this set. I love those. I love those note cards. Teresa probably has them on our website, kittenstitcher.com. Um, like I said, I got a bunch of threads and just ones that I needed that I was filling in some stuff for. They always wrap them in these cute little, I don't have this 
all fluffed out or looking nice or anything like that. But they always wrap them in the ribbon for you, which is just sweet. Um, I picked up... It's a zipper pool. It's a shepherd's bush. So it goes on their sampler bags. And it's got a little sheep and a little lady dot did these for these for them. Lois did. It was for their um oh it was for the newest release on the It's So Emma Mesh bag thing. They did a new one for samplers, and this goes on it. It's the zip it. So that's a sheep, a little house, and a heart. These are really cute. Those little bag pulls. I grabbed one of those. Um, oh, okay. Now I'm kicking myself for not walking in Jeanette's room at market, but my time at market was so limited and I was frantically trying to get through the list of the things that, um, Rachel had already had pre-orders for that she needed for her website. And so, um, unfortunately I did not get to go into a fraction of the rooms I wanted to at market, but had I known that these were in there, I would have made time and made myself get in there. There were so many things at market I missed, but if there's just no way to get through all of those rooms. Even if you're hustling, even if you're there the whole time, I wasn't even there. I was just there Friday night and a couple hours Saturday morning, and then I was gone and on my way home. Even if you're there all weekend, you still, I don't know, can make it to all the rooms. But this was a release that weekend. Um... I wasn't going to take it out of the bag. It was from, maybe I will. Mm -hmm. This was from Jeanette Douglas. And it was for uh, a release that she had at Market. And she has little uh, pin, like little pillows that go in here. But you honestly could put whatever you want in here. And you could switch it out seasonally if you want to. I just wanted to show you guys. This box is so beautifully made. Ah, oh, you guys, it's gorgeous. Um, it has the felt circle things on the bottom so it doesn't scratch up anything. It's made by... Cabernet Woods, Wisconsin? I don't know. You guys can look at it yourself. But it's beautiful. It's so smooth, too. I just fell in love with it, and I was like, okay, I have to have this box. So I bought this at Shepherd's Bush because I had not seen it, but I love it. Love it. Um, I did not buy the chart that went with this. I just bought this because I'm going to put my own little pillows or doodads or knick whatever. Knickknacks, tchotchkes, whatever you want to call it in there. I'm going to fill it up in there. Now, when I was in there Thursday... They did not have this. I don't even know if they had it Friday. I think it was Saturday when I went back in there. They had just gotten a shipment in and it was like fate. Um, so they got in some lakeside um, wood smoke, vintage wood smoke, which I love this color. It is a beautiful color. And whenever I find Lakeside in the wild, 40 or 46, I always buy it. Always. So, I was able to pick up some of this. Oh, I love this color. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous, gorgeous. I have some wood smoke. And I have 46 wood smoke as well. But, um, yeah. So, I picked up that. And then, so my thought process when I go to Shepherd's Bush... Now I didn't I didn't get all old charts. There's one or two in here that are newer charts, but when I go to Shepherd's Bush, I am specifically looking for older charts that I have not seen elsewhere. Tina and Terry have been in their shop there in Ogden. This is their 40th year, you guys. 40. 40 years in the same shop. It's incredible. And so you could spend days there and still not even remotely be through all of the treasures that are in that place. Like, I, I just want to sit for hours and go through all the bins and look through all their different sections. And so, oh gosh, sorry. That was showing a little bit of that chart. I apologize. Um, so my goal when I go there, and I'll go again this summer when I'm there, and the same thing is to try and get through some of these bins to look for 
vintage treasures. <laughs> Older charts or charts I haven't seen or charts that are no longer um, sold or um, caught, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. Jeez, Louise, Liz, camera brain. Um, charts that are out of print. So, or just rarer or harder to find. So that's always my goal when I go in there. What can I find that I haven't seen elsewhere um, to add to my collection? Now, a few of these are more readily available, but uh, actually maybe just one, two, maybe two or three of them. But other ones were older ones that I either had never seen before or had seen and just wanted to pick up, so I had them. So the first one is a Brenda Gervais. I know it's not out of print. I know you can get this on her website, but I have not seen it in too many stores to be happy, to, to be honest though. It's called Be Happy, Humble, and Kind. And I have seen this before, but I love this. I love that house inside that berry bowl. Now y'all know how I feel about berry bowls. I'm gonna say they're blueberries. We're gonna go with that. <laughs> I'll tell myself something, but I do love this one. And my goodness, do I love those blues and greens. Oh, that is right up my alley. So I got this one. I love this. I am gonna start this one soon. It's beautiful. So I got that one. And next one was a Loose Feathers. It was a Blackbird design. Again, blues and greens. Apparently, I had a theme going here. Um, it was Loose Feathers for the birds. Uh, I don't know if it has a number. Mm, so, again, blues and greens. Another berry bowl. What am I thinking? But I loved it too much not to get it, so I grabbed it. Oh, it's Spring Fever. Jeez, Liz, it does have a name on it. It's Spring Fever. That's what it's called. Okay. Next one is a Lottie Da one. I have seen this one, but not very often, and I don't know that I've seen it anywhere here recently. It's called Soul Birds by Lottie Da, and it's... It's got, hold on, I gotta put down these other ones. It's got a bunch of motifs and then a couple different alphabets. So you can personalize your own small pillow with a friend's or yours or whoever's initials. Um, and I thought this would be so fun for, to give as gifts to people. Also just to chum for myself, but to give as gifts. Um, I loved it. I, I have seen this before, but like I said, I have not seen this here recently much at all. So it's called Soul Birds by Lottie Da. So a bunch of fun little motifs and then the alphabets to customize and make your own pillows and borders. There's borders in there too. There's quite a few different borders you can use. So uh, that was my next one. Next one. I don't know that I actually have seen this one before ever. This is a Stacey Nash. It's an older Stacey Nash, I know, because it's got like the actual picture glued to the front of it. And it's Farmhouse Sampler Pin Keep Drum Scissor Fob and Needle Book. But I mainly bought it for that. Oh, I love that house. That little house, whatever that is. Pin disc called a pin disc and I love the little bird scissor fob so it's got the alphabet it's got the flower it's got the bird it's got the house now you can reconfigure these however you want to but it's got all four designs in there it's beautiful okay I love that one next one I had not seen this one before at all so this was a new to me chart it's an older one pocket of posies pocket of posies by la -dee da now you guys know i just finished the um come sit down just me and you that i love so much so this is kind of it looks a lot like that it's almost looks like a little companion piece to that um oh it's so cute a pocket of posies and she has it made into like a little i would probably make it into a little pouch 
can't really see, but those are like blue flowers in there. Oh, it's so pretty. I love this. I had never seen this one before, talking to posies. Um, this one is readily available. This is Paulette's, my friend Paulette, Spring Moon. Okay, now, <laughs> I know what some people are thinking. Liz, there's a huge basket on top of this house and on top of that, a rabbit jumping over it. <laughs> I love you, Paulette. I will not be stitching the rabbit. That much I can already tell you. And yes, that ginormous basket does not belong on top of a house, but I love it. And I love the house. The house is beautiful. But this bee skep and those blue flowers are really just what did me in. I had to have it. No, I'm not stitching the rabbit. And no, I'm probably not stitching the moon either. Just go ahead and put that out there. Then y'all will know when I start stitching it. But I love that bee skep and I love those blue flowers. It's so pretty. And they had a model. And so seeing Tina and Terry's model is really what did me in because I was like, that is stunning. Oh, the model was gorgeous, you guys. So pretty. So that's really why I succumbed and bought it. Okay. I'll just make some modifications. Next one. I had not ever seen this one before. Now, I... I had messed Paulette because I was like, holy moly, this is old. Like, I've never seen this before. And you know it's old because she still had this. She had pitch like a uh printed photo on the front of this one too when was the when was the date on this this was 2000 and um, you know what i saw the date somewhere on here where did i see the date on here this was early 2000s was early 2000s 2003 maybe that have been 2003 um oh my gosh that was when grace was born um oh actually you know what maybe it was on the chart that it's on the chart where i saw it that's where it was, you guys. It was on the chart. 2009. Sorry. This spoke. 2009. It's an oldie. And it is called Bird in the Bower. I had never seen this before, but I kind of fell in love with it. And I more fell in love with the saying on it and kind of the funky, folky art trees and house. Yes, there is a bunny. No, it will not be in mine. Okay, and it says, I stood a-gazing at a tree. T'was bloomed with crimson flower. And there a-gazing back at me, a bluebird in the bower. <laughs> I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So um, this is one I'd never seen before. So this was definitely a shepherd's bush treasure I snagged. I love it. So there's that. Um, another Blackburn design. I had not seen this one before either. Lots of people probably have, but I have not. Because, um, man, holy cow, Blackbird did a lot of stuff. So this is called Flowers of the Field. And sewing bag and pin cushion. So it's this sewing bag. And then it's this pin cushion on the back. Again, the blues, you guys. I just gravitate towards the blues. I'd never seen this one before. And I really loved it. So I picked this one up, Flowers of the Field. The flowers, hold on, let me see what it says on the chart. Oh, the flowers of the field. It actually says something that dull is. <laughs> on that one the flowers of the field that's the title <laughs> that's what the bag says so I got that one I also picked up I took this out of this I took it out of its bag because I was looking at it because I was going to start it and then <laughs> I didn't end up starting it and then I don't know where I laid down the bag this that truly is 
my life in a nutshell right there. So this is Betsy stockings. So there's three patriotic stockings and I'm going to do at least one or two of those for my patriotic stitching this summer. Love these. Betsy stockings. So cute. They're going to be tiny, really tiny. Like I may have to, I mean, I'll do them on 40 count, but I think they're still going to be really small. So grab those. And then last but not least, another one I have never seen before, ever. Um, and somebody told me that Vicki used to do these. Vicki, um, Janet, um, used to do these a lot where they're like these single cardstock charts. Um, so this is an old needlework press, Sweet Land. That's the... Oh, she, it says she collaborated with artist Nancy Mills. It was a doodle that Nancy had done and then Vicki turned it into a cross stitch. I love this so much. I'm gonna prim up a few of the colors, but this is so cool. It actually kind of reminds me of this a lot that I did. This is a boop, which didn't know which way to put my hands. This is a Priscilla's pocket chart um, I actually ordered that from the attic because in one of their videos they showed it. Um, I don't remember what it's called, but it's from Priscilla's Pocket. And Jan made it into this beautiful, oh, look at that. Is that fabric not perfect? Seriously, Jan's the best ever. It's got like the little eagles on the back and it's um, fully lined on the inside. But she, oh, I, I, she knows I love these little pockets. She'll put little buttons on the side for me and some little twill tape. So that was, I don't remember the name of this. I stitched this a couple years ago, but Jan finished it into a perfect little chart. I mean, a perfect little pouch because everything she does is perfection. So, um, but I love it. So it kind of reminded, it reminded me a lot of that. Um, so I'm going to stitch this one as well and have Jan make another little pouch for me with it. Super cute. Okay. That's it. Yep. <laughs> that's all, folks. Um, that's all I got. I, um, I'm sure I will find other things that I, A, forgot to mention, B, forgot I stitched, C, might have finished, D, probably bought. Um, I'll just have to show them in a future video. So... I'm sorry it was over a month. I always say I'm going to do better. And then, you know, life just happens. And it is what it is. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> so I will hopefully be back in a couple weeks. I will have more finishes. And I need to finish at least one or two of these. That's my hope and plan. Finish one or two of those and kind of share about um my trip or what I've been up to or who knows what else I will probably I will have a Friday night live this coming week I think I thought about taking it off and then I got some flack from some people about being a slacker because I took two weeks off when I was in Utah um they're like you're gonna take another week off again because then I will be off the week that I'm gone on the girls weekend but I am gonna upload a video that weekend so I'm not like I'm not doing a live but I am uploading a video um, so I'll probably have a live this coming week and, <clears throat> and then I, I'm slowly working through my list of people that I've contacted to do lives. And, um, I have a lot of friends that I still, um, are on the list and I can't wait to chat with them. So I need to get my, um, May, gosh, I can't even believe I'm saying that my May organized, because May's probably going to fly by, and then Stitch Con's the first week in June, and goodness gracious, and then we're going to Utah the end of June. There's just a lot going on. <laughs> There's a lot going on. So, anyways, hopefully I'll be back in a couple weeks, and I can share with you guys anything I missed this time, and fill you in on what's been going on, but I don't think I have anything else, so... How did Rachel end that video? I need to just start ending all my videos like that. We wish you many plentiful stitches. <laughs>
that's probably how I'm gonna end them from now on, uh, cheesy like that. So I, I, I will get to see Rachel. She'll, she'll be at our weekend and I'm looking forward to seeing her and lots of other friends. So anyways, I wish you many plentiful stitches. It was good to catch up with you guys and I managed to keep this at a relatively normal time. I'm super proud of myself because I didn't drone on about all my um, embarrassing and um, shameful moments that I had in Utah. So <laughs> those will be for another time, friends. All right. So until I see you again, take care, you guys. Bye.